Well, good morning all and welcome to our, our worship. And there's always an invitation to refreshments served outside the, the uh, West Hall at the, at the close of our worship. A number of notices uh, for today. First of all, you'll see that it's the, the church beach picnic uh, later today at Horseshoe Bay from 6 to 8. It's not just a CCY picnic, it's been organized by CCY and the fellowship a committee who organized Fabulous Friday, so it's open to all, so please feel to come along. You don't require to come for the whole two hours, but, but uh, come along and join in. That's at six o'clock uh, this evening. Um, other, other notices. Today is the last day of the, of the choir rehearsals, uh, which happen at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. The choir will still be in place through the summer to lead the hymn singing, but no choir rehearsals. So it's an opportunity today to thank the choir for their contribution and to Winton and Oliver. Thank you. <laughs> and another thank you um, and, and an award to, uh, to Christchurch. You may, have, you may have read in the current newsletter that uh, some time back Adam Harbutt uh, approached me um, Adam's a very keen sort of horticulturist. He's very interested in the, the sort of you know, native species in, here in Bermuda. And he'd come across old photographs of the, the churchyard, particularly the, the front of the churchyard there, where there was great blooms of freesias and the, the roses were, were good and so on. And all that had certainly disappeared because of the constant mowing. So he, he approached me and asked if he could take on responsibility for, for reintroducing some of that, because there are freezers there, but they say because they get mown over, uh, we, we, we never get to enjoy them. So the mowing was stopped uh, earlier on, um, and lots of seedlings have been planted. And so perhaps not next spring, but in future springs, there'll be great banks of, of freezers and, and displays of roses um, at, the, at the front of the, the church. Adam did say in his newsletter, he, he referred to his great love of gardening, and he also very graciously referred to my love of gardening. <laughs> now, that wasn't strictly accurate. <laughs> I, I have a great love of watching other people do gardening, right? And I do enjoy the finished the finish result. So rather sheepishly, I went along with, with Adam on uh, Thursday evening to the annual general meeting of the National Trust, where awards were, were handed out. And an award was given by the Bermuda National Trust to Christchurch Warwick for adopting environmental landscaping in the church grounds. So there you are. And our, <laughs> our, our thanks really to, to Adam and those that uh, assisted him. Um, and finally, just, just a reminder that the annual general meeting of the congregation will be next Sunday morning following our 10 o'clock worship. That's next Sunday morning, and all the relevant uh, documents, for financial accounts and so on, I think have already been posted online. I think with some, with some others still to come. So these are all our notices for this morning. And if someone gives me back the hymn book that has, they've confiscated. <laughs> Thanks, Winter. Thanks. Yep, that's all the notices for this morning. So let us worship God in singing to the Psalms and at hymn 70. Give praise and thanks unto the Lord. Hymn 70.
Have no fear, for I have redeemed you. I call you by your name. You are mine. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather this day to offer you our worship and our praise. We are but part of your church here on this island and in this your world, but we join with all peoples everywhere within your church to this day to offer praise and thanksgiving and to acknowledge you as creator and sustainer of all life. We acknowledge that your desire for us is that our lives may be enhanced, enriched, and that that happens through listening to the promptings of your Holy Spirit, to the words of Scripture, to the teachings of Christ, and to the example of others, the prophets of old, the saints of the church, and those who have influenced our own lives for good. And yet we acknowledge that we have not always lived as we should. We ignore these very promptings. We go our own way and ignore your guidance. We can be selfish, self-centered, lacking in faith, lacking in courage, which is so much part of faith. And we can be harmful to others and to creation itself. And so before you now, we ask forgiveness as we ask the forgiveness, the patience of those whom we have wronged or hurt or let down. Grant us, we pray, the assurance of that forgiveness that we might be freed from the faults and the failings of the past and the guilt that accompanies them. Lead us into that future which is your desire and hope and plan for each one of us and indeed for your church. Help us to respond more faithfully to the tasks set before us. To be a people and an individuals courage, <coughs> courageous in our witness. Following faithfully in the ways shown to us, which bring us closer to you, and in so doing closer to one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A word with our youngsters. This is the last Sunday also of, of, CC, of CCY before the summer break. And school, just, is school finished yet? Just about to finish? I know some of the schools have finished. Some have got... You'll be disappointed. Are you dis- disappointed that school is almost finished for the, for the summer? You don't look too disappointed. Anyone disappo- disappointed up there that school's finished for the summer? No, no. It starts again, <laughs> right? It's only temporary. It will be. It will be starting. It will still be starting again. Now, I have to tell you this: school's important, right? School's important. What did you say, Eli? Oh, so that's what you'll miss, playing a video game on your laptop at school. Right, right. (laughs) Do you do anything else at school? Do you learn things? Yes, you learn things at school. And that's, and that's, that's important. That's important, because we need to, we need to learn things. You need to learn, do you have favorite subjects? What do you like best? Sums? Art, you like art best? What do you like best? PE? So far we've got children who are illiterate and enumerate, but, but, <laughs> but I'm sure that's not the case. You, these things are important. Art, PE, music. Music's important. Music's important. But so too are, are, are sums and, and English and, and learning and time learning other languages. And that's what we call kind of education, and, and it's, it's, it's important. And we're glad that you come here on a Sunday and learn too from our teachers. And this is a, an opportunity for me today to thank all our CCY teachers and to the other volunteers 
who have supported them and assisted them through the, through the term. So thanks to all of your teachers and your, volu and your volunteers. But here's the thing about the importance, the importance of what we call education. And I know in CCY you'll have time, you will have come across it sometimes, the story of, of Moses. When he led his people away from slavery in Egypt. And as he started that journey, here's what he didn't say. He didn't say, we're about to start on a long walk to freedom, although it was, was a long walk. And he didn't say, and we're going to a land of milk and honey, which meant a much better land than the one they've left. This is what he said as they started the walk. And this is what he said at the, end, at the end of his life. And this isn't just for the CCY teachers, this is for all the parents and all the grandparents. This is what he said. He told them this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And then he said, keep these words. Remember these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Tell them to your children and talk about them when you're at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you go to sleep. That's the most important thing that he wanted to tell them. And it was important that these are the things that get passed from generation to generation. And this final word is maybe a word for the grown-ups rather than for you, the children, but it's this. Someone once said, to keep a country safe, you need an army. To keep civilization safe, you need education. A reminder, and especially, of these words of Moses as he started that journey. We're going to sing now hymn 798, the peace of the earth be with you. be seated. Before our children and young people go out to CCY, it's something else to say today, which is sad for us, but exciting for them, because this is the last day in church for Mandela and Krista and young Eli there, before they leave next month to go to London. Why anyone would want to live in London when they could live in Bermuda is beyond me, but that's <laughs> That's what they're going to be doing as, as Krista goes there to, as there's to study. So, you head off soon? Excited about it, Eli? You are? Good. A, a, new, a new life for you all. Good. Well, we want to wish you all the best. We're going to be so sorry to be losing you. But perhaps you'll return to Bermuda at some point. And when you do, I hope you return here to, to Christchurch. But in the meantime, from all of us, the very best to you. Yeah. So, a word of blessing on, on the children. 
Loving God, as they go from here to CCY, may they go with your blessing. And for Mandela, Krista, and Eli, may they too know your blessing and your peace in their new life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's reading comes from the New Testament that can be found on page 39 of the Pew Bible. It is the famous story of Jesus calming the storm. Mark 4, verses 35 to 39. On that day, when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in their boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of the Lord. The choir will sing today's anthem.
Him 260. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm restrains the restless wave. Him 260. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As David said, the story of Jesus calming the storm is perhaps a very well-known one. But for all that it's well-known, what, what do we make of it? Just to paint the, the picture, in, in Mark's Gospel, uh, for some reason, Jesus decides at night time, not during the day as in the other Gospels, but at night time, to cross to the other side. Now, the other side of the Sea of Galilee meant that he was crossing from a side uh, which, was, which was Jewish over to what was known as the Decapolis, which was, which was Gentile land. So, in a way, he was, he was crossing barriers. He was going from one place of, of uh, peoples to, to another. And so they set off, and again in Mark's gospel, it seems that there were other boats with them, which strangely just, just fade from the picture when this tremendous storm blows up. Now, it's quite common, actually, in, in the Sea of Galilee uh, for storms to arise in the, in the evening. The wind gets up in, in the evening, and it can be, it can be quite rough uh, out there on the Sea of Galilee. But it would seem this was no ordinary storm, because remember who was in the boat with them. It's his, it's his disciples, some of whom are fishermen. So they know a storm you know, when, they, when they experience one, and, and they're worried. They're the ones that are thinking, we're all going to drown. We're all going to. So this is no ordinary storm. This is, this is being painted as a, as a, huge, as a huge storm. A storm which we're told that when they waken Jesus up and say, how, how can you be sleeping um, you know, on the boat there when, when we're in, in danger of all drowning and, and perishing? And we're told with a word, he, 
he calms the storm. It's interesting the word that he, that he uses. Remember the story earlier on in the Gospel of Mark um, of the, the man possessed with, with demonic spirits and Jesus rebukes the spirits and tells them to come out of him. Well, this is the same word here. He kind of rebukes the storm and we're told that immediately there was a, it's as a dead calm. It was actually a, a sort of a peaceful calm. And eventually they make their way safely to the, to the other side. And they don't know what to make of it. They don't know what to make of it. Who is this, they ask, that he can calm the waves and still the storm? And for ourselves, in all truth, what, what, do, we, what do we make of it? This idea that with a word, a, a dreadful storm could just be calmed. And here in this island, used to storms, used, used to hurricanes, would probably rather see them calmed, right, than, than be, be hit by them. And, and we see some, we see the power of nature in so many instances. We're seeing it, you know, at the, at the present time, whether it's heat or, or, or drought um, or flood. I'm told it was snowing in Colorado uh, just the other day. Um, and we've seen some terrible storms in, in different parts of the world, which just illustrate the, the, the power of nature. And it may be quite nice if we didn't, didn't have that, but that's the way nature is and that's the way climate is. So what do we make of this calming of the storm? And it really goes back to the stories we've already looked at in Mark where Jesus is, is healing the man with the, with the demonic spirits. And he goes, on, he goes on to do likewise at the, other side, at the other side of the lake. And he heals the man with the, withered, with the withered hand. And it all goes back to these first verses, these early verses in Mark's gospel, that the kingdom of God is near. It's, it's in your midst. And, and so, you know, acknowledge, acknowledge this. And that kingdom of God speaks of all the things that enhance and enrich life and is opposed, opposed to all the things that detract, that detract from it. And, and in Mark's gospel, there's a cosmic sense to this, these, these destructive powers. These destructive powers are there in people's lives. They're there in individuals' lives, whether it be the withered hand or the, or the, the spirits within them. And, and they're there in nature. In the ancient world, the seas, the ocean, were seen as a place of great fear and anxiety. It was where demons dwelt. And so, in a sense, Mark is, is, is focusing, he's focusing on that, and he's demonstrating that this Jesus is no ordinary healer or miracle worker, of which there were many in Jesus' time, whether authentic or not. But there, there, were, there were many, but none had the power over nature that Mark is saying Jesus had. And it's, it's Mark demonstrating through the question that the disciples ask at the end of this, who, who is this? And it's just a reminder of the focus that Mark sets up of, of Jesus battling, if you like, that with, with all that was negative and, and destructive. Remember the story from last week. You, you cannot rob a house without, or you can't enter a house without containing the strong man that is there. And, and that's what Mark's again sort of emphasizing here, that Jesus is again looking to contain, to control all that is negative and destructive of life and promote all that enhances and enriches it. And in that task, of course, we find that yes, he heals and he welcomes those that are rejected, but at the same time, he engenders opposition. Opposition perhaps from those who should have known better. The scribes that we looked at the other week, educated, educated in the Torah. The Pharisees, educated in the laws of, of, of Judaism. And yet they find themselves in opposition. And I came across, I just thought it was a great, a great quote which illustrates the danger. These, 
these people who were in power, political and, and religious. It came, it came from a man I must admit I'd never heard of, Abba Iban. Abba Iban. I'll be surprised if any of you have heard of him either. I certainly hadn't. But he was at one time the Foreign Secretary of, of Israel. Right? He was the Foreign Secretary of Israel. And he returned to his alma mater to receive, a, to receive an award from his university. And he opened his speech with these words. It was here that I learned the honesty, integrity, and love of truth that have been such a disadvantage to me in my political career. <laughs> now that's maybe worth repeating, right? It was here that I learned the honesty, integrity, and love of truth that have been such a disadvantage to me in my political career. And you know, I don't know, maybe we could point fingers, I wouldn't want to, to anybody. But what it should perhaps make us aware of, D don't, don't single out the politicians, don't single out those in business to whom that might also apply. It can equally apply to all of us. Right? Having been exposed to honesty and integrity, integrity and the love of truth, we go another way. We go another way. And it's the way, it's the way of a, a lack of faith rather than, rather than faith. Jesus kind of scolds the disciples. He said, have, have you no faith? Have you no faith? I said before in, in Mark's Gospel, there are those that are inside and there are those that are outside. Right. There are those that somehow respond to his word and his ministry and are, if you like, inside. And there are those that are outside who reject all that he seems to be, he seems to be representing. And we're told that when the disciples arrived safely on the other shore, um, it says they were, the translation here says they were in awe, but a better translation was they were terrified, right? They were fearful of fear itself. They were terrified. And in that terror-stricken state, they asked the question, who is this man? And perhaps they're asking the question, are we inside or are we outside? They've listened to the story of the seed that falls in in barren ground, the seed that's, that sprouts and the seed that dies off. Are we, are we good soil or bad soil? Are we inside or, or outside? They're not sure, they're not understanding it. And throughout Mark's gospel, they, they struggle with any sense of understanding. And it's in that that Jesus questions them about their, their faith. Have you no faith? And the opposite of faith is not, is not atheism. Right. The words that are used in the Greek. The opposite of faith is not atheism. The opposite of faith is lack of faith, which is lack of courage. It's lack of courage to stand by that faith that you've adopted. And what the gospel makes clear is it's not a one-off thing. It's not a one-off thing. Faith waxes and wanes. It can be strong. It can be weak. It can come. And, and it can go. And it's in that that we sometimes experience this, this lack of faith, this, this lack of courage. And the great thing about the disciples, despite all of that, despite the scolding from Jesus, where's your, where's your faith? Have you no faith? Despite their anxiety and their fear, their terror, who is this man that we've kind of got involved with and signed up to? The great thing that ultimately, ultimately, post-resurrection, they found the courage to follow him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 500... And 32, Lord, you have come to the seashore.
Let us offer now our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks this day for the very gift of life, the wonders of creation, the splendor of the furthest galaxies, the distant stars, the solar system in which we live, and this planet with its beauty, the mountain ranges, the vast oceans and seas, the rich diversity of life on land and in sea, and human life with its diversity of different cultures and backgrounds and histories and stories to tell and different faiths, but faiths that recognize that which is beyond ourselves, that God whom we seek to praise this day. And we give thanks for the gift of faith and for the knowledge that your grasp of us is so much greater than our grasp of you. We give thanks for the teaching of Christ, for the gospel writers, for all who have passed the message of the realities of your kingdom, of your reign from generation to generation. We pray that we may do the same and that our children and grandchildren will take the story forward, creating their own story as they are drawn into your future. And it is in Christ's name that we offer our prayers this day for others. We pray for our families, wherever they may be, and ask your blessing upon them. We pray for our children, our grandchildren, our young people, those making their way in life in a world which seems confused, distracted, divided, being pulled in different directions, seeking to find a way. And we pray and hope that they may hear that still small voice, which is your word to us and to them. We pray for those whom we know to be in need at this time, for there are those whom we know who are in hospital. There are those awaiting treatment, those recovering from it. And sadly, always there are those for whom there is no treatment nor cure. And for them and for their families, we ask the blessing of your peace. We pray for all who care for them, the doctors, the nurses, all involved within the health service in different ways. And at the same time, too, we pray as the summer break comes for all those involved in education, seeking to direct, to impart knowledge, yes, but seeking, too, to direct a true and meaningful way of life. We pray for those who are anxious, though living in our midst, and those who are fearful, terrified of what the days may bring, the threats of illness or unemployment or financial insecurity, the wondering where the next meal comes from. We pray for a society which is more just, and seek to play our part in creating it. And so we pray too for those who have the difficult task of government, those who make the decisions which affect all our lives, those who set the priorities, the budgets. May they be men and women of integrity and honesty and a love of truth. And may we be supportive of them, in the difficult task that is theirs. We pray too for those whose lives are so very different from our own, in a world scarred by war and violence and suffering, which those in its very midst would wish to see ended, but who find themselves powerless to achieve that. We look ahead in hope to the end of such violence and war and the beginnings of peace and the acts of rebuilding, rebuilding lives and communities. We pray too for your church at this time, 
placed here to reflect and to demonstrate how we might better learn to live one with another, seeking always to overcome division and to bring reconciliation. A church that is courageous in its opposition to that which is wrong and lacking in justice. And always we remember with thanksgiving those no longer with us but whose love we were privileged to receive. May we never think them far from us, for we share a fellowship and a communion with them still through the mystery of that fellowship and communion that we have in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue our worship with the giving of our offering. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your name we dedicate this, our offering, praying that it may be a symbol of our commitment to live in your ways and to work for the growth and the signs of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray together now and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In 737, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? In 737.
And now go in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and always.